Propaganda is really hard to see when the media is privately owned and there's no formal censorship. Especially when the media do periodically attack and expose corporate and government malfeasance. Iraq could decide on any given day to provide a biological or chemical weapon to a terrorist group or individual terrorists. None of that was true. None of it. They're wrong now as they were there. Brennan himself is a liar. Odd for a government official. It's also hard to see propaganda when these people constantly portray themselves as the spokesmen of free speech. World Press Freedom Day. It was established by the UN more than a quarter century ago to recognize that a free press isn't a luxury. It's essential to develop and more importantly, to maintain democracy. But what we don't talk about as much is how insanely narrow the range of attack and discussion usually is. His supporters have called you a snake. They use mm -hmm. the snake emoji. Obama will have accumulated more debt than all the other presidents before him combined. A new poll finds just one in four Americans are comfortable with the president's use of Twitter. Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky and Edward Herman lays out a model of propaganda. One, size, concentrated ownership, owner wealth, and the profit orientation of the dominant mass media firms. Two, advertising as the primary source of income of the mass media. We're watching it, MSNBC. The all new Ego Power Plus Select Cut Mo. Three, the media's reliance on information from the government, business, and experts approved and funded by agents of power. Michael Hayden, former director of the CIA and the NSA, the National Security Agency, is a CNN national security analyst. Joining me now, James Clapper. He served as the director of national intelligence under President Obama. We're joined now by the former top lawyer at the FBI, Jim Baker. Michael German, former FBI special agent. Four. Flack, a means of disciplining the media, and five, originally anti communism, but now updated to encompass more just ideology generally. Further editions of the, our, the book, in those, we incorporated free market ideology as another ideological element. You could also say maybe, maybe the war on terror. These filters occur so naturally that even news people operating with integrity and goodwill are able to think that they're interpreting the news objectively. Now, I've essentially given you a summary of the preface of the book. So what I plan on doing with these videos is giving a similar summary of the five filters and possibly the subsequent chapters of the book. But I'm gonna do my best to give updated examples and show how the model still applies to media today. Especially because a lot of the examples in the book are outdated and the book was obviously written before social media, Fox News, MSNBC, etc. So with these quick summaries and updated examples, hopefully the next time you're at your parents' house watching CNN, you can say, that's a manufacturing consent. But the beauty of the book and why it's so important is because it transcends era. And you'll see this in the next video. The first example they use for the first filter of the model is newspapers from the 1800s. Because the point is always that you can't have a handful of super mega wealthy people owning all the news and expect things to work out well.